God bless you, my brothers and my sisters, and Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. And Shannon, we bless him today for another day's journey. And Shannon, we count it as a privilege and uh, count it uh, such a great blessing to be able to once again stand in this in this space and sit in there to give God all the praise and the glory for all that uh, he has done, he's doing right now. And if he have us on the wake up call, what he would do in the morning. Greet each one of you in the matchless, majestic, marvelous name of our risen Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And certainly, uh, we thank God for all each one of you uh, who join with us, tune in each week during this uh, midweek uh, a study. And certainly, we thank God for you. I ask that the prayer warriors keep on praying and uh, praying that you continue to be saved and uh, during this pandemic and setting it be watchful and uh, do all you can to to be safe and to be careful knowing that uh, uh, that uh, this uh, COVID is still real and and want want us to be uh, be mindful is that we still serve a keeping power God uh, who is able to keep us even in these uh, trying times that we find ourselves having to uh, have to deal with. To all of our New Hopians and to all of our family and all of our friends, God bless you and hope that you've had such a great and blessed week thus far. Praying that you continue uh, to have uh, uh, the smile of God be upon you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we come today in the most humble and the most obedient a way that we know how we come, gracious God, thanking you once again for another day's journey. Uh, thank you for bringing us thus far and during this uh, time of the day. And, and Santa, we bless you because you have kept us even when we were unable to keep ourselves. Father, we are thankful that it, we move and we have our being, we have our existence in you and because of you. Bless us now. Father, we ask that you will forgive us now of all of our sins. Forgive us, God, of all of our transgressions, our iniquities is before, is ever before us. God, we pray that, that you will blot them out according to your word, that if we confess our sins, mm -hmm. that you are faithful and that you are just to forgive us. Forgive us now. According to your word, God, you will you will cast them in the sea. You will remember them no more. You will seal up our sins in the bag. So, God, we ask that you do it right now. Have mercy on these stored in the United States of America. Bless our country. Bless our, our leaders, uh, those that God who's in national, who's uh, bless those who are in state leadership, those who are local prayer. God, we're praying that you just bless now. Only you can do. Keep us, God, in these trying uh, times that we find ourselves living in, not only with the pandemic, but, God, we knowing that uh, you move by Mother Nature. There have been storms coming our way, and, God, we don't know about tomorrow, but, God, we know that, that you're going to ride on every storm, praying that you calm it. Keep us, oh, God, in your keeping power. Praying, God, for sick peoples everywhere, those that we know of, those who are in our church family, those who are in our immediate family, those our friends who, who we know and do not know who are sick. God, you still got healing hands. Stretch forth your hand. Heal. Get them a testimony. Raise them up off the sick. But let them know that, that you still are God who will heal thee. Thank you, dear God, for being our Jehovah Rapha. Bless us now, God. We're praying, God, you bless not only our New Hope Church family, but every church open in your name. Bless our city. Bless God. Bless every preacher. Bless every, every pastor that God. Bless those who are on the wall, on the wall that is declaring your word. Even in this time that the church find herself, uh, that God dealing with the persecution. Bless now. And God, we pray that you come in that personal Holy Spirit will touch our spiritual ears and we can hear, our eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can accept what you have to say to us on this day. We pray, God, you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my rock 
and my Redeemer. Amen. All right, God bless you. Uh, on today, I want to start a, a series of, of dealing with joy, and uh, I wanna I want to uh, to kind of deal with uh, out of Psalms number thirty, verse fifty. But I want to I want us to kind of focus in on on the title of how to know joy comments in the morning. Want to want, want to know want want to just deal with how to know uh, joy comes in the morning, and we're gonna center that around Psalms number uh, Psalm number thirty, uh, verse number fifty, and so we're gonna talk about a joy that comes in the morning. How do we know that? Uh, we, 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 we were see about the chaos. I don't need to remind us. I don't need to uh, elaborate long on what we've been dealing with over a year and then dealing with uh, the pandemic and dealing with all of the other s stuff that is in our world that got us at a, at, at a state of distress, a state of worry, dealing with anxiety and, 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 and this Psalms 30, verse 5, rang in our voice, in their minds, about how long it's going to be tonight. How do we know joy is going to come? So, so, so I want us to meditate on several, several passages of scriptures that uh, we want us to meditate on. Psalms, I want to meditate on Psalms 16, verse 11. Psalms 16, verse 11. Psalms 47, verse 1. Psalms 47, verse 1. Psalms 105, verse 43. Psalms 105, verse 43. Psalms 107, verse 22. Psalms 107, Verse 22. Psalms 118, verse 15. Psalms 118, verse 15. Psalms 126, verses 2 through 5. That's Psalms 126, verse 2 through 5. And I would, if you would, uh, kind of focus in on those verses, but it, it'll do you good to read the, those entire uh, psalms. Uh, it, it do you good to, to kind of read, but I want to put put I want to put an emphasis on dealing with joy in those particular verses that uh, I had given you. All right. So uh, let's let's. I want you to turn to Psalms number thirty. Psalms number thirty, and um, in particular, I want to want to we want to um, dissect that number verse number five. I want to look at uh, number five of the thirtieth number of Psalms. Okay, now let me let me give us let's give a little introduction on today that kind of get kind of get our mind uh, focus in and and on what uh, the psalmist is talking about. Uh, Psalms number thirty, of course, was uh, penned, uh, written by David, who was Israel's second king. Now, 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 those that are taking notes, I want you to write this down, is that this Psalms number 30 is, uh, I kind of like what um, Matthew Henry, uh, uh, and I kind of, when you kind of look at his comments on, on this psalm, I kind of agree with him. Uh, he says that this Psalms, this psalm number 30 is a psalm, first of all, of thanksgiving. Uh, 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 David um, give thanks for the great deliverance 
which God had brought upon David. But also, uh, uh, he, he says that uh, David penned this song uh, upon his recovery from a dangerous fit of sickness, which might have happened to be about the time of the dedication of his house. So, 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 so we, we, want, we want to look at those two aspects, is that it's, 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 a, it's a psalm, David pins it uh, out of, of thanksgiving for great, for God's deliverance from him. And then uh, uh, after David had recovered from one of his sickness. And so it, and when, we, when we look at his deliverance, is that we know that David suffered greatly uh, from uh, his uh, his uh, predecessor. Uh, uh, we know we know that um, King Saul, uh, who was the first king of Israel, is that um, he was uh, after David. Uh, he was he was he was after David. He was. Uh, he, not only was he jealous of David, but he felt for some reason of another within his mind that David was a threat to him. And so um, David, uh, when you read the book, in the book of Samuel, it tells us how David was on the run, uh, how, how, how David uh, hid himself from Saul, hid himself in uh, the cave. And so, so, so when um, when Saul had learned a priest had offered David some aid, if you go back to um, to Samuel, it tells us that 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 that, that David was hid. He was, he offered some aid by a priest. And that's when Saul had 85 men of God slaughtered. And, 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 and out, of, out of that um, sense of fear, out of David being fearful, David uh, felt a depth of sorrow, is that uh, if you look at Psalms number 52, when you, if, you, if you read that, Psalms number 52, verses number one. It, I, I'm going I'm to read what the new, I like how the New Living Translation says. He said, why do you boast about your crimes? This is David replying to, um, to King Saul. He talks about great war. Don't you realize God's justice continue forever? Read that when you get a chance. In Psalms number 52, verse 1, if you skip down to verse number 8 of Psalms 52, it says that uh, David uh, says, now you got to understand God is steadfast. God is merciful. God is faithful. He endures forever. But look, look at what he says about, he says, he says um, in verse 8, he said, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God, flourishing and ever fruitful. I trust in the hist of God's forever and ever. In other words, it may be dark. It may be, it may, it may be dark in my life. This is David talking. David said, it may be dark. I may, I may be at a, at a state of fearfulness. Is that uh, I, honest, I know what uh, King Saul have done. I know he's looking for me. But David said, I'm trusting God. And when David realized that even though he was having a dark moment in his life, is that he found, found joy. 
And when you look at how what he says here in this 52nd number of songs, is that he found, how, how, you ask the question, how did he find joy? He found joy in trusting, get this now, in the goodness of God. Now, he, now, 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 now follow, follow me now, is that even though he's on the run, even though he got words that Saul is looking for him, is sorting after him, is, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that even though fear is trying to take the best of him, but, but, but David said, in the midst of it all, I got joy. And we're gonna we're gonna look at the word joy later on and what see what it means. Is that is that he said he said he said the reason I, I got joy is because I'm trusting in the goodness of God. Why, David? Because David realized that God is his joy giver. May, 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 may want to write that down. That God is a joy giver. And when you look at what we face and what we may have to face, there are some circumstances that we have overcome, that, we, that we've gone through. We don't know what all 21 may befall us or may behold us, but, 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 but if we're going to make it through the night, if we're going to make it through the nights in our lives, is that we got, we got, we got to, we got to, we got to remember who is our joy giver. Okay? Don't care how, how terrible or how terrifying the circumstances, hear me now, may be in your life. You may know someone that is, that, that, that is facing some terrible situ situation or going through some terrible circumstances is that you got to declare to them like David is saying that I know who my joy giver is. Okay, are you walking with me? So, so let, 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 let's go back to the 30 number of Psalms. And that's why David was able to say in verse number five that weeping May endure for a night. But he said, weeping won't last forever. Why? Because joy something gonna happen in the morning. And, and 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 between and between between if you take if you're taking some notice that 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 that, 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 that there's a time span between what he says in Psalms number fifty two and what he says in Psalm number thirty. He writes this years later in Psalms number thirty. Okay, I'm, I'm doing a little skipping because I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to verse number uh, uh, number five. But I want you to get excited with me along with David. Is, is that is that is that is that skip down to verse number uh, eleven and twelve? <clears throat> they, David understand about the the nights that is in his life. But he, but he declared that he's able to make it through the night. Look at what he says in number, verse number 11 and 12. And that's, why, that's why he had to focus on the goodness of God. He said, you turn, I'm reading from the New, Inter, the New International Version. He said, you turn my wailing <laughs> into dancing. He wrote, you remove my sackcloth. He, he using that, when, when you look at that word sackcloth, it, it's a, it's a, a it symbolizes weeping. Why? 
what did what David David declared that he turns his weeping and clothed him with joy. And I know you heard me many times use the analogy of a lemon. Is is that is that is that is that is that sometimes uh, life gives us lemons. And you have to learn how to turn those sour lemons into lemonades. Okay? You have, you have to muscle up enough of that God in you to turn the situations around. So, they, so David said, instead of me crying, my head out, I'm going to start dancing. David said, instead of me clothing myself and weeping, he said, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, 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 I'm being clothed in joy. So, so this psalm begins with David praising God. And thanking him for not allowing his enemies, I'm talking about Saul, to rejoice over him. But he also thanked God for healing him after he cried out to him for help. And so, and so that's so so that, 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 that that's what that's what I love about what he says there in Psalms number 30, verses. Number five, the King James verse says, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, and I know we've heard that so many times. But joy comes in the morning. Now, when you look at that word joy, I want you to underline that word joy. It's a Hebrew word that means ringing cry of entreating. It means ringing a cry of supplication. That word joy means ringing a cry and, and proclamation. It's a, it means to praise. When you look at that word Joy is both a cry for a prayer and then it also a cry for a praise. Are you hearing me? When you look at that word joy, it means a cry. You, 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 can't, you, can't, <laughs> you, can't, you can't be quiet. You, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you, you, you can try all you can to um, compose uh, uh, your composure. To hold back. But it's a cry. It's a cry of prayer. And then it's a cry of praise. What are you, what, what are you saying pastor? I'm glad you asked. Is that it shows that joy is found not after our pain. Not after Everything is made right, but true joy is found in the midst of it. Oh, 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 are you hearing me? Is, is that is that is that is that is that true joy is found not after everything is made right? Not after my pain, not after my disappointment, not after my setback, but true joy is found in the midst of it. And it goes back to how do I know? It goes back to the question, how do I know when my joy comes in the morning? And David answered us. The only way that you and I can have joy 
even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of our suffering, even in the midst of our sickness, is that when we first of all realize and know the one who is the source of our joy. And the Lord, him only, is the one who can enter into our pain, who can enter into our misfortune, who can enter into our distress situation, who can enter into our pain and fill us with unspeakable joy. Okay? Not, 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 not. Look, look quickly at what he says there. Look, let, let, let's see, can we down, um, dissect some words here that David says? Because he kind of, he kind of, kind of throws me off there. Kind of makes me wonder. In order makes you wonder. Listen to what he says. He says God's anger. Huh? He said, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Uh, I think the new American standard, the Bible uh, says is that, um, this is like this. He said, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. <laughs> Might want, might, 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 might want to, I want you to see the difference. His anger, his anger is for a moment. But his favor, King James used the words endure, but I like how the, uh, the other translation says it's for a lifetime. Un understand, understand God's position is that God's, yes, he get angry. But when you look at, according to the word of God, in, this, in verse number five, it says that when, yes, God angers, but, 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 it, but it flees as a moment. But you got to contrast that, but look at his favor. His favor Endures forever. It's a lifetime. Now, now, now when, you, when you take into consideration, there's good teaching that. When, when you take into consideration his anger, is that, is that his anger uh, civilizes God's discipline. He loves us enough that he disciplines us. And when he knows that we're heading in the wrong direction, David says he does something for us, is that he reroutes us. We're heading for destruction. We're heading for a pity party. But because he favored us, is that he steps in. Or, or you're seeing that. That his favor is a lifetime. All of us, God ain't the only one. All of us get angry. When you look at what's going on in our world, dealing with the racism and dealing with these children uh, here, here now lately being uh, uh, going through a, this, this, this sex trafficking. When you when you when you when you're hearing about these kids being um, molested. When when you, when you know just 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 seeing what's going on in our in our country and in our land, the sin that is ever before us calls us to become angry. 
And there's nothing, it's, it's no sin to get angry when it's, when it, when it's, when it's, when it's justifiable. And when you, and, and, and since we're human, is that it ought to cause us to cry. It ought to make us weep. It ought to make us, us moan when we see the condition of mankind. Seeing the direction that our country is headed. It ought to cause us to moan when you see the violence and seeing the crime. Children having children. Children won't even listen to parents. They're killing parents. Parents get killing and molesting children. The list goes on and on. It, it ought to make us, us weep. But then on the other hand, when we think about is that there has to be something, there has to be a new horizon somewhere, sometime. And what the word of God reminds those of us who are faithful, who trust him, that what the word of God teaches us to call on, call on him while he is near. Things like what we're seeing that is causing us to weep and to cause us to mourn on the inside is not going to last forever. And that's what, that's what David was talking about, is that his favor. Used to sing a song coming up, time, time, time winding up. The struggle is in the land, God going to move his hand. Is that that, that, that is, that, that is perhaps is a portraying sooner than many realize. The favor of God is not going to always be Showing of the wrath of God is going to be, and so as, so as, so as believers, is that we we need to we need to thank God, praise God that He love us enough that that when we heading down the path of despair. that he know how to rewrite us. When we're heading toward self-destruction, that he opened up our spiritual eyes so that, we're, so that we can get a, so that we can be reminded and we can get a glimpse. I think I want to stop right there. Get a glimpse of how gracious and how kind and how loving God is to us. So the question before us that would challenge us is that is that uh, do we trust the joy giver enough to know that he will not leave us, that he will not wait till we get out of our situation, but he's with us in the midst of it. Would you trust him? That even in the midst of our pain, even in the midst of our misery, even in the midst of our disappointment, that he's with us. So let's continue on next week dealing with uh, how to know joy comes in the morning. Let us progress to God. Our Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you to God for being with us right now and reminding us that it's in you that we move, that it's in you. And through it all, that we can make it whatever the situation may be. Bless us now, O oh Father. In your sweet son Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen.